All right, so in this example, I'm gonna go over the basics of latitude and longitude and drawing to the canvas um, using a spreadsheet. So to start out, if we look at how latitude and longitude is sort of arranged on the, can uh, on the canvas and in real life, um, longitude would be equal to our X coordinates and it goes on a scale of um, what looks like here to be zero to 180, but since 180 is both negative and positive, it would be negative 180 to 180. Um, and then latitude goes on a scale of negative 90 all the way to positive 90. And this would be our Y value. And looking at an example in real life, um, if I'm currently in Philadelphia, and if you look at Google Maps, you'll see at the very top, you can see the decimal coordinates for latitude and longitude. And so right now, we're looking at the latitude of 40. And if we come back here, latitude is here. And if we look at 40, which is somewhere between here, this being uh, 30 and 60 is like right around here. So this right here would be about 40, which looks correct. And if we come back here, we'll see this says negative 75. And coming back here, we can see that 60 is here and this is in the negative. West is negative, um, one of the Western hemisphere. Um, then you would see right here is about 60. And so that is that looks about correct based on the scale of this map. Um, 70 would be about here. So this is broken down into a system of degrees, minutes, and seconds. And so looking here, de by decimal notation, we saw 39 or 40 and 75. Um, and this is comes from a place of degrees, minutes, and seconds, where each minute is equal to one mile in length. So each degree would be 60 miles in length. And that's how this is sort of sort of calculated when you see those latitude and longitude. Um, and then to make it easier for computer systems or GPS systems to look at latitude and longitude data, it becomes decimals. And that's what we'll be working with for our, um, our practice today. And the data set that we're working with is one of US cities. And I've cleaned up this data a little bit, but it is, a row, I've got a column of cities column of latitude, column of longitude, and there's one column for population where certain cities have the population written down. Um, we'll mainly be using these first three. And what I've done here is I've given myself a header for the, um, for the, the data sets that I have here or the columns that I have here. So that way I can grab this whole uh, column as an array in P5JS. Now, I'm going to come back here, or actually, I'm going to download this, which I've already done as a CSV file, going to File, Download, and Comma Separated Value. And then I'm going to come back to my sketch. And first step is I need to give myself a title. So let's call this USA Map CSV. And because I'm not going to use Draw for right now, I'm actually going to delete this so I just have Setup. And the first thing I want to do is create a data set. So I'm going to create a variable to store that data. So let data, and that goes to the very top because that is a global variable. And then I want to do a, a function called preload, which is also built in um, to P5JS, which will load my data into a, um, which will run this function before everything else in the sketch happens. So that way I know that the data is loaded before anything else happens. So before I do that, I have to load my data into the sketch. And I can do that by clicking on this tab here, dropping this down, and then upload file. I can drag and drop this in here. And once I see it complete, great. I see it over here, X out. And then what I want to do is store my data variable. Um, I want to store stuff inside that. What I want to store is this CSV file. So I'm going to use a function called load table, which takes three arguments. 
The first argument is the name of the file, so uscities.csv. The second argument is the data type. And the third is a command called header, which is going to use this top line of our sketch to grab each column. And we'll see that work in a second. So inside here now, this is loaded. And I'm just going to print data to the terminal. And it's going to take a second just because this is a larger file. So project saved. Let's run this. And we'll see this come up in the console as an array with four different columns. Great. So columns, four rows, uh, 36,000 plus. And we can look at the columns just real quick. And you see it's loaded in city, lat, longitude, and population. Great. So I know that that's working. I'm going to delete this because it's going to, otherwise it'll slow down my sketch. The next thing I need to do is store the amount of rows in my uh, data set. And I can use a function to do that called get row count. So I'm going to say let num rows. So I'm making a new variable called num rows. And then using dot notation, I use the variable name of data which is where our table is stored. I say get row count. And this will store row count in a variable. So print num rows. Great. I know that that's working. The next step is to store each column in an array. So I'm going to say let lng equal table dot get column and inside here I use the name that I use at the very top so LNG and so what this also does is use dot notation to store every, this entire column in an array oh and I need to use the correct variable name so this is data which is where our, da our data is stored, um, our table or CSV is stored. And it says get column. So get the entire column of LNG and store it in this new variable. And I could call this um, longitude, but I'm terrible at spelling. So I'm going to keep this at LNG. I don't want to call it long because long is a data type and the computer will get confused or the program will get confused. So call it LNG. And do the same thing for lat data dot get column and in parentheses lat and those just happen to be the same because I, I wrote them that way and so then the next step is to write a for loop that cycles through everything and there are a couple steps that I'm skipping over that I'll come back to later on in terms of getting the minimum and the maximum um, because I kind of just want to show drawing to the screen before we get there. So I need to do a for loop and I'm going to start at i or let i equals zero. So I'm starting at zero and then i is less than the number of rows. So this for loop is going to run for as many times as rows there are and it's going to increment by one each time. And then inside this shrink this down a tiny bit I need to do something so what I need to do is a draw some stuff to the screen but B I need to change the way that these latitudes and longitudes are actually drawn to our screen so if we look back here longitude is on a scale of negative 180 to 180 and latitude is on a scale of negative 90 to 90 so Let's come back here and let's use a map to be able to do this. So I'm going to write let map lat, or let's start with long, map long equal map. And I need this LNG variable. And since this is an array, I'm going to cycle through it. So remember, I access elements of an array by using the square brackets. And then I is going to change in value each time the for loop runs. So it's going to start at zero 
and then one, and then two, and it's gonna cycle through each element of the array. And then I need to go on the scale of negative 180 to 180. Looking back here, longitude, negative 180 to 180. And then I wanna go on a scale from zero to the width of the canvas since we're on the X variable. And then let map lat equal map lat. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the I variable. And I wanna go on a scale of negative 90 to 90. Now, one thing I have to change here is because when we look at our X and Y coordinates, um, Y is normally drawn with zero at the very top and the height is at the bottom. But because in this case, the height, our maximum value is at the top and our lower numbers at the bottom, we need to reverse that. And that's where map comes in handy, where I can say, make the bottom of the screen the lower number and make the top of the screen where the higher numbers go. And then I can use point to draw this map LNG and map lat. And let's see if this works. Cool. All right. So we've drawn it to the screen. We don't have a background here. So let's draw a background. 255 for white. And now this is really squished and it's squished for a couple reasons. It's squished in part because this is, is drawn to a global scale and not to the scale of what's on our screen here. So let's, and the other fact that this is drawn at a square. And if we look at maps of the globe, um, if we look at a Mercator projection, for example, or even just down here, this is drawn on a rectangular sort of, sort of map or like this is much more, much more of a rectangular sort of setup. So let's actually do that here. So I'm going to change this from like 500 and 300. And now that should be a little bit more correct, right? But let's fix these numbers. And we've got two options for doing that. The first option is using a bounding box website to help us figure out exactly where we want our bounding area to go. So I'm going to zoom out here, take a second. Whoop. And this is, I'll post a link to this in our site. Oop. Ah, I'm going to move, there we go move over and I need to include Alaska in this as well. So then I'm going to draw my shape. Let's do from like here, we'll do like this. And this will give me bounding box down at the bottom here. It takes it, it's, it is searched down a little bit. And I'm going to look for CSV, and this is going to show me negative 178 to 10.7. So I'm going to copy this first one and use this as my longitude. Command C. Command V. And come back here. And I can copy the whole thing and just put it in here for right now. We wanted to highlight everything. So Command C and Command V. Let's comment this out. So this is from the bounding box. All right. And now if I rerun this, all right. So that looks a little bit better, but it's still, it gets Hawaii in there. It's not perfect. So another way I could do this is using the built-in functions of, um, of P5.js. So I can use max and min to figure this out. So for example, since these are arrays, I can cycle through them and find the, the maximum value or the minimum value using the max and min function. So I can say let, LN, let max LNG, so I'm making a new variable, and then max LNG and then let min LNG equal min 
LNG. And if I print, uh, let's do min LNG, max LNG, and see what that comes up with down here. So this is showing negative 176 to negative 64. So that, that number of 10 was a little off. What I can do is Command C, could copy this in here. Or better yet, I mean, I think I should do it the other way where I use the variables, but let's just see if that gets a little bit better. All right, good. So now that's stretching out to the dimensions lengthwise. We'll do the same thing for above. And actually, instead of this, we'll use the variables. So max LNG and min LNG. Oh, opposite, sorry. Min LNG and max LNG. Should get the same exact thing. So I'm gonna do the same thing with max lat. And the min lat and print min lat max lat. All right, so 17 to 71. So we'll do that again down here with min lat and max lat. Space this out correctly. All right, and that fits so much better in our sketch. But one thing that's happening here is these are all really dense together. So I might say, you know, stroke weight is point, point 0.25. Let's see what that does, point 0.25. Little bit better. We could add in a little bit of opacity here. So stroke zero with a opacity of 10. All right, now that's showing us a little bit more density here. So we could do it, let's do it a little bit higher. So maybe 50. All right, now that's starting to show us a little bit more overlap here and it's become a much, a much sort of clear map. It might even work better if we reverse this. So instead of the color being um, white in the background. What if we made it black? All right, and now that comes up even a little bit more clearly. Oh, we've also got Puerto Rico um, included down here as well. Um, and so this would be the beginnings of how you would get your, <clears throat> your, um, your data into here. Um, you could eventually do things like incorporating if you hover over um, and you want the city to pop up using things like a class. If you wanted the um, population to be here and present, that'd be something that you could also do. Um, what's difficult is this one doesn't have populations for every single quantity here, so it makes it a little bit more difficult, um, but you could still work with it. But I think just having the cities here in general looks pretty good. And that's how you start out working with latitude and longitude and P5JS.